Okay, hey, enjoyed our time again the other day, uh, but Saturday, so um, two hours was nice. Um, it's so good to be able to go to a full game and kind of just not feel rushed. Um, a great job on putting, a great job on chipping. Um, I would have liked to have you see some more of the results <coughs> in their full game, but I feel like we're on our way there, okay? Um, I feel like you, you can feel that too, so. Um, you know, you, you've drawn some bad habits. I'm going to start off with a full game of, um, that are hurting you. Um, it's one of those things where you could get away with it with an eight and a nine iron and a wedge. You know, anytime, typically, like, if I see this club coming down and we're here on the way down, the hand, club head's out here, like, what are we going to have to do? We don't get to rotate you know, we kind of stall like this and go here. And I know, cause I know you don't love your impact, right? So eventually to make this work, so you get to have the impact that I, I want you to have, and I know you want to have, is we're going to have to learn. And this is how um, I want you to learn to do it. This is so important that we get here. And notice how I just start with this parallel of the ground and you may see me looking in mirrors here and here. So I'm not like, <laughs> avoiding looking at you, but uh, I'm looking in mirrors. I'm all over the place, which, you know, we had talked about, which is perfect for you. So I'm right thigh, parallel to the ground. This stuff is just so important that we start right. If I start here, I'm off, okay? So these drills, I cannot stress enough to you how important the way we do it is. Um, if, I mean, if I were to start like this, I'm, I'm already screwed with the drill, okay? so. I want you to learn to get this club more behind your hands, okay? I want you to learn to not get this club back here, which you do, you get it way behind you. Um, and we're gonna talk about how to do that really quick now again, just as a refresher, okay? So I'm gonna set up here, right? I'm gonna do a nice hinge right in front of me here. Now, notice when I go back where my hands are going. I don't go like this. Do you see that? So watch how they're following so you should always practice with an alignment stick on the ground parallel to your target line. But when I do this, see that? And now I want you to notice when doing this too, where is this golf club going? See, it's bisecting my shoulder. So for this drill, really, I want you to learn to just kick that like left shoulder down, come through here, no higher than left arm parallel from there, okay? Now when we come down to check it, you see where I'm at behind my hands? Boom. So. To make sure we're doing this right, I have a little less room this way, but here, see where I'm at? I get back to this position. You're like, well, how do you hit the ball from there? Pretty easy. Boom. This, little, this shoulder will tilt down and we'll get there and you'll, you'll feel that. So I feel like as I've talked about, you know, our rotation is number one. Number two, our pivot, how we're, our whole body is turning, okay? Now pivot can be broken into all different sections of our body, but just in general, how you know, can we turn efficiently and powerfully to end up in a good position like this? Or are we gonna be off? We're kind of like that, right? Um, so you don't even have to hit a ball a lot, right? What you need to do is just at your office there where you have all those mirrors, is here and learn to go kick that shoulder down, have your hands travel that back and just look in that mirror, what am I doing? I'm kind of bisecting that shoulder. Now I'm gonna come down. This is crucial. We're not pulling down to the spot. Watch how I rotate my body and I end up here with it behind my hands. I think I just wanted to hit it. <laughs> um, but, you know, this is one of those things where um, you would, it, get as much out of this if you don't go to the range at all for a week and just do this, okay? It, it's not a matter of, hey, I gotta be at the range to do this, okay? I mean, you just need to learn to look here, check the mirror, and then get your body moving down and go, can I get to right here? Because from there, you're such a good position. I always call this, I say this, if you can get to that position where I showed you here, I call it hitting the ball back here. Because really, if you got everything else done, you're all set. All you have to do from here is really, you just rotate. There's no manipulation of that club anymore. See how I get here, I get to release it and here. So there's nothing I have to do from here. You have so much manipulation when you get it out here that you have to do. 
and you can just hear the sound. Once you get this, um, you're going to hear such better compression. You don't compress the ball yet. And like, I feel like as strong as you are and stuff like you have, um, a long way to go as far as with speed, distance, you know, just getting some good compression. I feel like you're kind of that, um, um, I would say you haven't tasted the fruits yet, really, because you're going to see some huge changes coming when you get this stuff down. Right now, in a way, it's almost like you kind of would kind of say you muscle it around just from the club being out here, and sometimes you just boom make it work, right? Um, so really, full swing. That I mean, that is huge. That's that's what I want the focus to be on. Remember, I said we would get this down where we're not doing 52 things that we're working on, and so for you. That's the big deal. Um, chipping again, just real simple. And I'm going to send you a separate video. It's like this 15 minute course I built called, um, I don't even know what I call it, Chipping Excellence or something I built for this company. Um, it'll probably be in two different small files because I think it's too big to send. But in there, you're going to see how, you know, how to set up again, posture and stuff. And also going over basically the five different, um, I call them deadly sins. And like I said, like, you know, and I know some people laugh at me and think I'm nuts when I say this, but it doesn't matter which one you did wrong. Just fix them all, okay? Because usually you're going to know your trend of what you do, okay? So here we go. I, a lot of people nowadays talk about lining up perfectly straight, okay? They like it, they're, and I understand that model. I, I am one that I like to be about five degrees open. If my students are comfortable with that, then I'm, I'm all for it with them. I'm not one like I like to see, you know, in the old days people get way open. I don't like that because then we start bringing issues in. The more open I get, the more the space has to get open to compensate. And we don't want that, okay? I don't want to have to aim for a little shot like this. And in order to equal off me being that far left, I have to match the club face. That means I'd have to point it over there like this. Now, can that be done? Yeah, there's usually a special shot for that. But, I mean, can it be done? Yeah. Is it consistent? No, not nearly as consistent, okay? So, um, I want you to line up your feet very, very close together. Then we just kind of splay this foot out. So I, I like to feel like it's like this for here, and I just kind of go like this. And then watch my upper body kind of does. I just kind of like lean into it a little bit. It, the leaning into it as part is important too because it's not just like here i'm gonna get everything here it's like a lot of the lean here is if we really don't even lean that much if we get our shoulders more level we definitely don't want to be anything like this we want to be kind of as level as we can even like you're probably going to feel like your left shoulder is even down okay so here feet close together i splay it out a bit and i want you to practice right now kind of what you're going to feel is middle front for space and then number one deadly sin is this we get it behind because look where it wants to come down we want to use this thing called natural forces if i get it here where does the club want to fall when i turn here if i get it back here where does it want to fall when i turn back here okay now if i get it here where does it want to fall when i turn watch up here so if you're taking your practice swings getting ready to uh, hit a shot and you're like Dang it, they're all like back here. We'll just start getting more out this way and you'll start to see, oh wow, it moved right up there, okay? So that's one thing you can just kind of play around with. So number one is we gotta get this club more started just on our foot line so it can fall back on it. Number two, we gotta get we gotta get this club moving down this way. Like we're casting, okay? So it's cast. Um, we're casting so that we can get back to this as we started and then we turn okay so we're turning where this thing I, I like to feel like it's this once i get to here right watch how this thing's going to just go do 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 at my belly button it's going to follow it basically the whole time so i think it's a better thought and you're going to come up with your own whatever feels more comfortable the more you do it but um are you do you want to think more of your body rotating like that or do you want to think it's more of just the arms that are pulling you I, either way it works okay i as a golfer i go back and forth sometimes i feel my arms are just pulling me over 
Which is really, I, I think, probably one of the best thoughts. But there's times that I feel like I've had to, all I've had to think about is just rotating my, to the target and I'm good. So I, that's why I kind of bring up both. I think it's good to know that there's a couple different options, a couple different ways to think about it and feel it. Um, deceleration is obviously one where we get in trouble. So boom, ooh, I'm gonna slow down, that's dead. And I just feel like, you know, we, we adjust our tempo. I don't ever like going higher than this. So if I have a shot that I want to not go too far, I didn't even hit that one that good, but um, you can see how I slow down the tempo a ton, right? You know, it just kind of depends what I'm trying to do. I mean, I still want that same distance. I think I hit that five feet, <laughs> you know? I can also hit 35 yards by accelerating like my, I try to think of it, I, I have to match up my arms and body, right? But a lot of it just thinking of, you know, I want my turn, I want to feel like I'm getting more, you know, making sure I rotate my body. Where we get deadly, and here's another deadly sin, is when we come in whoo, with shaffling. And we're, we'll catch a lot off the hosel if we're doing that, okay? So I'm trying to think if I mentioned all the um, deadly sins. I think I did. Um, so, you know, I don't, you know, the other one I think is implicit. I didn't say just rotating. So, towards the target, finishing that way. You know, another way to think about how we finish what it looks like is. Oh, well, okay. I know what I didn't mention is this. Is I see this a lot. What is that probably going to do? First, I'll probably drive into the ground. I'll hit a lot of thin shots like that I'm not it's back again to this thing where I don't want to do this movement right I want to do this movement with my hands okay so look at my hands the way they move they go whoop, 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 whoop. so I want you most of the time there'll, there'll be a time for a different shot but I'm most of the time I want you to be able to set a beer on top of it when you're done I'm really a big fan of holding our finish why so we can check to see what we did right and wrong Okay, I, I, there's other reasons too, but I, I that thought of, you know, I, I just don't like it at all. I want, I want to be at a place where I can finish the shot like that and be, I know I'm facing, had my arms out like this and I know, hey, everything looked good, okay? Um, <clears throat> putting, you have your drills for speed that we went over that, um, the three, four times back with the balls, um, guessing long, short. I think you know that one. I'll, I'll mention that to you again if you need to. Um, your stroke and how you start it is um, good. I'm, I'm grabbing a putter here. Hang on, hang on. Um, I mean, overall, I think you do fine. But I know you mentioned wanting to get a mat to put on and what, how to practice. Um, so I think when you do that, you know, what we're trying to do is, if I have this here, you know, I'm trying to see, can I get mine started over this line or something here, right? So I'll pick intermediate targets, and I don't like, I don't press this mat a ton here, but I have something else inside. But if, if I am, just to show you, like I'm trying to think, how do I get this thing, let's say started on um, a three, let's say this is what, two feet? Okay, so that's perfect. And then maybe I'm gonna go, okay, I'm gonna see if I can get it started over here. And then started here, just on the line there, right? Um, the one I think I recommended to you, you know, you're gonna have to have pretty good speed going up that hill to get it dropped in, okay? But I think the good thing is, is practice, you know, your routine when you don't do this. Don't just stand there and have one ball, root, break. We never wanna do that. Like, we wanna mimic some of the stuff we're gonna do on the course as best we can. The other most simple thing I think you can do for, it's really funny because I have all these other drills, technical stuff, and I get to putting and I kind of, um, <clears throat> I change um, a lot because I feel like there's a lot of personal preferences that can come in hand. And, you know, it's just the studies are so conclusive with so many that what is important here that it's, it's, not, it's not debatable. It's the space angle, getting the ball started where we want, and then, you know, that's so that's if we get the right line, right? And then speed is everything. 
I mean, there's usually not a reason for a two putt, or I mean a three putt, but speed. I mean, sure, you're gonna miss a three footer every once in a while, a four footer. Um, I mean, that just happens, right? It's, but it, you know, you can't blame line and everything when you start getting, oh, I got eight footer on the way back. Well, you're gonna three putt some of those. And to our average is what, 7.6 feet is, or seven and a half feet is, um, you know, like 50%. So think about that. Um, Here's one drill I like a lot for putting, just to double check, see if we're doing okay. And this putter, this one's not made of room. So the mirror I, I wanted is big for you. Um, getting that mirror so your eyes are set basically a little bit inside the ball line every time, and it matches at all time. I start seeing things much different if I'm moving around, okay? So the other thing I like is you can just put a shaft down on the ground and just go, how do I do putting? This club should go basically a little bit inside to a little bit back inside. And I think overall, Randall, you do fine on putting. I, I didn't see anything um, in your stroke that would make me worry. Um, but if you want to practice something like that, that's fine. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, I think that covers it. If I left some out, let me know. But anyways, it's great to see you again. Let me know how the practice is going. And um, bright, bright, I think you got a bright future ahead of you with this once we can dial in this full game more. Because you, we saw your talent, I think, come through in chipping. You're gonna have that in putting too, I believe. Once we get these long putts down, your your um, distance, and I think once we eliminate your issues with getting way back here and then this tipping out, you're gonna be good. you're gonna become a really strong player. Okay, all right, my friend. Appreciate the opportunity, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.